can you imagine can you imagine this let's just let's just look at you know the next uh you know the next say two games because to me if you go all in two in the next two games then you have your bye you you've got to think very seriously i don't know why you wouldn't about playing jordan love because if you go four and nine and you're coming off your bye what better time is there to basically say, okay, Jordan Love, let's see what you got and let's see what we're going to do this offseason. That is the kind of organization that the Packers have been, a continuum. This is not a team like the Rams that is all in for one season. You know, Brian Gutekun showed that at the trading deadline this, this year. He was unwilling to stretch and pay 120 cents on the dollar uh, for a Chase Claypool or whoever, Darren Waller, whatever. Uh, and, and so this is a team that is out to see what they have in 2024, 25, and beyond. They used a first-round pick on Jordan Love. If they go to 4-8, and eight, you've got to start thinking about it. And then how weirdly ironic that the ninth loss could come in Soldier Field at the home of the team that has been so passive and the team that the Packers have tormented for so many years. You know, basically since Papa Bear Hallis almost has left the sidelines, you know, and I'm exaggerating because obviously Ditka, you know, had the great Super Bowl run in 85. But I'm saying that it's been a long time since the Chicago Bears can do something to put a nail in, you know, their arch rivals. But Mike, right after they're at Philadelphia, at Chicago, if they lose both those games and then have the bye, you tell me, what good does it do in your last four games to keep throwing Aaron Rodgers out there? We're on the same page again on that point. I mentioned this last night in the item that I wrote based upon that press conference he gave after the game. At some point, the decision has to be made to put him on injured reserve. Easy cover. He's not being benched. This thumb isn't getting any better. He's having a hard time gripping the football. We're putting him on injured reserve, and Jordan Love is going to play. That's how this arguable GOAT's career could end, with a whimper and hardly a bang if he doesn't play next year. But, Peter, can you imagine how certain folks at 345 Park Avenue – would feel about that prospect when coming out of the bye, there's a Monday night standalone primetime game at Lambeau Field against the Rams, a Christmas Day standalone visit to the Miami Dolphins, and then a New Year's Day late afternoon, 425 Eastern visit from the Vikings to Lambeau Field. And they flex those games out all the time of that 425 window, but given how the Vikings are playing this year, depending upon what they may be playing for at that point, this is one that may stay put, not because of the Packers, but because of the team that's coming in to play the Packers. So there's three straight weeks of high-profile games for Green Bay, and there may be a few phone calls made about this whole, what's this I hear about Aaron Rodgers possibly going on injured reserve so you can see what Jordan Love has? And the other thing too, Peter... Until you're mathematically eliminated, see, that's the thing. Four and eight, four and nine, if they lose at Soldier Field, practical matter, done. Mathematically, probably not done. And, and that's really the question that I see. Would they make that decision to put Jordan Love out there as a pre preseason 2023 unless and until they are put in that category of teams that have been officially eliminated? That's going to be a tough call. But Mike, I might ask you this question. Let's say you love the Green Bay Packers. You live in Tacoma, Washington. You know, you live in uh, whatever, uh, Burlington, Vermont. You love the Packers. I have a question for you. Those big high profile games. Would you rather see Aaron Rodgers playing out the string? Or would you rather see... see Hey, let's see what we got in Jordan Love. This, I'm going to love the Packers next year, whether they, uh, whether Aaron Rodgers is the quarterback or Jordan Love or Joe Dokes. 
You know, I and and we've had this guy on our bench forever. Can we please see what we have? And Mike, just remember one thing. When the Green Bay Packers decided to move on from Brett Favre in July of 2008, and then Aaron Rodgers played that first season, I think everybody, I'm not saying they forget this, but I think everybody, you know, puts in a, in a distant rearview mirror. He struggled in 2008. You know, he did not have a great year. He showed promise, but he struggled. And that's why to me, and I'm not saying that Jordan Love is going to do what Aaron Rodgers did, either short or long term. I'm just saying, if you thought enough of him to pick him so high that you wanted to trade up to get him in the first round, if you thought enough of him, okay, at some point, you have to let him try to play or let him play before he moves on. And to me, it would be the height of, uh, I don't want to say stupidity, that it's the wrong word. But I mean, it's not what the Green Bay Packers are. The Green Bay Packers the height of think short. about 2025, 26, 27. They always do that. Brian Gutekunst is the perfect general manager for that. He's just exactly what Ted Thompson was. And to think that they wouldn't play Jordan Love down the stretch it is mind-boggling to me. I, I would not understand it at all. Yeah, it would be the height of short-sightedness to stick with Aaron yeah, Rodgers beyond the, the point I... where they know as a practical yeah. matter the fork is in them. Even if they're not mathematically eliminated, they're smart enough to realize this isn't going to magically get better. And that's something Aaron Rodgers was saying last night. We showed against the Cowboys that when we play to our potential, we can win. So if we play to our potential, we can win each of the next six games. He said that last night. The problem is in the professional world of football, every team is trying to play to its potential. And the more that one team succeeds, yeah. the more the other team necessarily fails. So they ran into a team where their formula worked on Sunday. They ran into a team on Thursday night where their formula didn't work because the Titans put the clamps on the running game. And if the Packers can't run, the Packers can't throw, the Packers can't win. So 6-0, and oh, I'd be stunned. How can you have any real confidence that a team that went 4-7 and seven is suddenly going to run the table? Now, I know it's not unprecedented. Sims and I were talking about this yesterday. When RG3 was a rookie in 2012, they were three and six, and they rattled off seven in a row to finish the season. It could happen. Crazier things have happened this month, but it it's kind of hard to hear the confidence bordering on delusion, bordering on hubris, that when you're four and seven for the first time since 2006, we're just going to show up and win six in a row. They could. I'm not saying they can't, but at some point, Peter the clock is ticking toward acknowledging reality and realizing the schedule makers it's, honestly it's Mike, time. the schedule makers have done the packers a great favor you know howard katz and company at the nfl office you know why because the first game is against philadelphia in philadelphia so if you if you really want to know where you are if if the packers think hey listen when we play to our potential we can beat anybody okay this right now is, I, I think of one of the two or three toughest assignments in the NFL, late November, uh, 2022. You know what one of the toughest assignments is? Yeah. You win at the link in prime time. I, that's, there's no other way to say it. So if they do win, then the whole, uh, you, you know, the whole landscape has changed, changed drastically. But I think you're like me. I don't see it happening. But, hey, they've got a chance. Let's see if they can do it. Going to be even harder to go into the Lincoln win in prime time when the Eagles just lost at the Lincoln prime time yeah. a few days ago. They're going to be on full alert, and they're going to relish the opportunity to be the ones that drive the stake into the heart of the Green Bay Packers. And, hey, if you're one of these teams that's having a great year, in the NFC, 
you don't want Aaron Rodgers hanging around the playoffs. You don't want Aaron Rodgers, and you don't want Tom Brady hanging around the postseason because that's the kind of team that can that can catch fire under the leadership of a guy who's been there and done that over and over and over again. And I think the Eagles will be particularly motivated to knock out, as a practical matter, the Green Bay Packers. Matt Casey, our coordinating producer, raises a great point. We were talking about 2006, how bad they were. They were 4-7 and seven that year. Favre was horrible that year. And he didn't decide to call it a day. He came back for one more year in Green Bay, and he was pretty damn good in 2007. And I wonder if that historical reality will be a factor for Aaron Rodgers. Hey, I saw Brett do it. Brett had a crappy year in 2006. He came back in 2007, and they were great. They got to the brink of the Super Bowl. And Rodgers had a front row seat for it. That may be a factor. You know, it may have been he entered this season. And he said that made-for-TV golf thing that he did with Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. He was asked at some point that week, do you think about retirement? He said all the time. And he claimed in 2021 he was 50-50 on retiring the weekend before training camp opened. You just, you know, you got me wondering now, does this season go so badly for Aaron Rodgers that he decides I'm going to come back for one more and I'm going to do it right this time? I think with a guy like Aaron Rodgers, he has to decide on his own that he needs to be all in, all offseason long, there for the offseason program. You can't tell him, I told you so. He's got to tell himself, yeah, maybe I should do this differently if I'm back for one more year. Maybe I should gather my guys somewhere where we just work out on our own. So, you know, Christian Watson, hey, Christian Watson, five touchdowns this week. Where's he been all year? Well, maybe he was a little freaked out by Aaron Rodgers. Didn't feel comfortable with this mythical being that he grew up, literally grew up from the time he was five years old watching. And he's nervous around him. Yeah. Doesn't want to screw up. Took took a while to get to the point where he's comfortable. And now looks pretty comfortable to me. Wouldn't that have been nice if he'd have been that comfortable week one when he was wide ass open running down the right sideline after the Vikings went up 7 nothing? and he drops the ball, if he catches that pass, maybe the whole season's different for the Packers. Who knows? So I think if he's going to come back, Peter, to make your point earlier, which I think is very accurate, the Packers may expect more. I think the key is he's got to expect more from himself if he wants next year to be different than this year. Yeah, and I think it's a great point, Mike. Whether it's uh, coming to Green Bay for five weeks, uh, that you weren't in Green Bay last year for those five weeks, or, or whether you bring everybody to, you know, Rancho Mirage, California or something, you know, what you bring everybody to California uh, for eight or nine days and you work out there. I just think there's got to be a different level of commitment. I would want that if I were the Packers. I would want a different level of commitment from Aaron Rodgers this year. And again, I'll say this. I said it a couple of weeks ago when we talked about it, and you were adamant that he had to have been in the offseason program. It's his right as a player. Any player can say, I'm not going to do that. I'm not coming to a non-mandatory practice in the offseason, period. And if he says that, then the Packers may have a decision to make. But I think it shouldn't come to that. It should come to he and Matt, and, and Matt LaFleur having a conversation on January 10th, you know, before everybody goes their separate ways, and having a conversation and saying, okay, you know, we now are in the fire drill stage of our careers right here. Because look, Matt LaFleur, it's not like Matt LaFleur is getting fired after this year. It's almost certainly not like he's getting fired after next year. But... You know, you can't have three, you know, four and 13 seasons in a row in the NFL. You just can't do it. So all I'm saying is that I think after this season, there needs to be a very frank conversation uh, between the leader of the Green Bay Packers off the field and the leader of the Green Bay Packers on the field. And Peter, I'm a firm believer that in early 2008, Mike McCarthy and Ted Thompson wanted a decision from Brett Favre, a commitment from Brett Favre at a time when they knew 
if they told him, we want yes or no right now, they knew what the answer was going to be. They knew it was going to be no. And I'm with you on this. They need to say to Aaron Rodgers, ASAP, after this season ends, if you're going to come back for this year, we need to know it now. And we need to know that you're truly all in. And you need to make that commitment to us and yourself now. Otherwise, this train has to keep it rolling down the tracks. And he may not like that, but... You know, it's one thing to tiptoe around the delicate genius when the delicate genius is doing delicate genius things. When all of a sudden he's not getting it done, they're not going to hesitate to tell it like it is, like they told it like it was the night they traded up in round one without even letting him know ahead of time to take Jordan Love, his eventual replacement and eventual maybe coming. Let's hear a little bit from Matt LaFleur just to get a vibe as to where he is because this is a guy who lost 10 regular season games in three seasons combined, he's looking at losing that many this year alone. Here he is on the latest loss and where the team stands in the race for the playoffs. Obviously extremely disappointed right now um, to put on a performance like that. Uh, I, I just I don't even know what to say. Uh, there was, it was nothing like a few days ago, um, and that's why you're only as good as your last game. We're, we're not in a very good position right now, that's for sure. Um, like I told the guys, like there's, there's no margin for error, period. And it's not like I know we got a really tough team coming up um, in Philly. So we, we're going to get back to work on Monday and um, try to make some of these corrections because we just, it's disappointing when you have, whether it's a coverage bust defensively, whether it's uh, protection bust and or, you know, any, any type of mistake in regards to the mental errors. That's extremely disappointing, especially where we're at in, in the season. Um, and we're not, I mean, quite frankly, we, even when we are all on the same page, we're not executing to the level that we need to. And um, that's why, you know, we're sitting here at, at freaking four and seven. Matt LaFleur was very emotional in the locker room on Sunday after they beat the Cowboys. It really felt like they had turned a corner. It felt like the light had gone on. And there were plenty of mistakes last night. He says there's no margin for error after they made error after error after error on both sides of the ball in all phases last night to lose that game. So, again, you can button yourself up as much as you want, but there's always an opponent on the field who is trying to do the exact opposite. And this year, 11 tries, 7 times, The Packers haven't been able to impose their will. They've had the other team's will imposed upon them. And it could change. Like I said, I'm I'm not saying get the shovel out and start throwing dirt, but at least have an idea where the shovel is because we're getting close to the time where you go get the shovel and you declare the 2022 Packers over and done. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.